All right, part three is on transduction mediated by bacteriophages. So bacteriophages, these are viruses that have bacteria as a host, um, and they re reproduce uh, via bacterial genetic recombination. So if, if um, transduction is the process where viruses are able to exchange DNA from one um, uh, one individual to another. So first we need to cover a little basics about viruses. So viruses actually come in many different sizes and shapes. Um, this is an example of one of the phages that's able to infect E. coli and it kind of has this characteristic face hugger shape from aliens where it has these legs and these legs are used in order to attach to its host. So these legs are useful for recognizing its bacterial host. Once it attaches, um, it is able to take DNA or RNA and inject that into the bacteria cell. So the process of injecting that DNA into the cell um, allows for the um, allows for the virus to take over the bacterial cell host. So the phage is ab absorbed to the bacterial host cell. It injects um, its piece of DNA. This DNA is used in order to create um, RNA, which is used in order to create proteins. And these proteins, for example, are able to degrade the host DNA. So it's able to kill the host um, by taking over its, its um, ribosomes, by taking over its polymerases in order to produce the material that it needs to do that. Once the host cell has been taken over, then it uses the instructions on the DNA. So one of the things that needs to happen is you need to copy the genome. So a large number of viral copies of the genome are produced. And then from these, you have parts of the viral particle created and you know you have the head for example and then the core and the um, fibers are kind of created separately and then that allows the mature phages to assemble and so for the mature phages to assemble the DNA the host gen genome the viral genome needs to be pumped into the head and then the fiber and the and the core need to attach to the head at this point, the host cell is lysed and the phages can be released in the environment and they can go on and try to find a brand new host cell. So uh, lederberg zinder experiment was used to show that phage could actually be used to transfer genetic material from one bacteria to another. And so what this experiment did is it um, had two different strains, LA2 and LA22 were two different strains of bacteria. And these bacteria were separated by this filter. And so the things that could pass back and forth across this filter had to be very small. So media could transfer back and forth. Um, and this was actually small enough to allow viral particles to pass back and forth. Um, but DNA, but um, sorry, bacteria cells were not actually able to pass back and forth. And so they took these cells. So this cell, not, neither of these were um, prototrophs uh, because they lacked certain genes. So this strain wasn't able to produce methionine or histamine. This strain was not able to produce phenylalanine or tryptophan. And so but these were complementary to each other. So if somehow you could get these two genes into this strain, then this strain would be able to grow on minimal media. And so that's what they found actually happened was that they were able to transfer this DNA across this membrane so that this cell was transformed. And so they were able to do that because this strain was actually infected with viral particles. So what happened? So phage production is not perfect. So you have a phage infect a cell and injects its DNA. It takes over the cell. It makes a large number of copies of its own genome. It chops up the host uh, DNA. 
and then it assembled all these new particles. However, while, while this viral genome is typically what's actually put into the head of the, the new viral particle, occasionally a mistake is made. And so sometimes the piece of DNA that actually gets put into the viral particle is host DNA. So the, the DNA from the host cell, like a small piece of this DNA, actually gets put into the viral particle. And so this viral particle is able to actually um, assemble, it gets released, and if it finds another cell, it's able to attach and then inject itself into the new recipient cell. So normally this recipient cell would be in a lot of trouble because it would about to be taken over by the viral DNA. But instead what happens is this, what is actually transferred is not viral DNA, but it's DNA from a completely different cell. And so again, we've talked a lot about the fact that linear DNA can recombine with the host chromosome so that you can actually replace part of the host, sorry, the recipient chromosome um, with this linear piece of DNA. So this becomes a template for recombination. And so this process is referred to as transduction, and it's when the viral particle is actually responsible for transferring the bacterial DNA from one cell to another.